Hello, this is Aubrey and Nance. I am um, at coming to you at from at home, um, and I want to talk a little bit about communicating effectively while you're online with your professors. And this is a whole new thing. I'm home. We're all home. This is all a new experience um, for a lot of us, especially with the added bonus of possibly having children at home, um, having relatives at home that aren't usually home. Um, so this is all new. So this video is just a quick um, video just to talk to you about communicating effectively online. I'm going to move my little face here. So the first thing I want you to do is find out how best your professors want to be communicated to. So do they respond better to emails? Um, do they like to get messages through the Canvas portal um, by phone? Do they give you a phone number that you could call or by text? Um, you know, make sure that they are okay with, with getting texts from you. Um, and if you get a better response or if it's really something quick that they can answer, then send a text message. Everybody is different. Everybody's communication style is different. And when it comes to classes, it's really important for you to know your professor's communication style and the best way to get a hold of that professor. A lot of professors, this is very new to them as well. Um, and so they're working out their flow. I'm working out my flow. Um, and so, uh, just figure it out. If you, if you send an email to the professor and you get a quick response from them, um, but you may not get an answer back on the text message, then the email is the better way or vice versa. Time to respond. In this world, of course, with the way technology is set up, we want a quick response. If you send a message out, you're expecting to get something back really quickly. But understand that that may not happen, um, especially when it comes to your professors. You have no clue what they have going on in their own world, um, and uh, they may not be able to respond. I would say give, give people at least one business day to respond. And if they don't respond within a business day, and a business day is like Monday through Friday, you know, nine to five type of thing. Um, and if they don't respond within a business day, maybe send a reminder. I know for me, a lot of emails get kind of clumped together or I get text messages from a whole lot of students. I might miss your message or think that I responded and I didn't respond. So um, it's, it, it's okay to remind um, a person that you emailed that person. And what I usually do is just kind of re-forward the email I already sent to them just so that they know I already tried to contact them. All professors have office hours. Find out what your professor's office hours are. During that time, um, they are taking uh, student calls, they're responding to student emails, all of those types of things. That is the designated time for them to do that. That doesn't mean that they don't already have somebody that they're talking to on the phone or responding to or whatever, and they're, they're busy doing that and they can't get back to you immediately. But if you contact them during their office hours, it's probably a better chance that you're going to get hold of them. And again, just don't expect an immediate reply. Um, know that we are all in this together. We're all trying to figure it out together. And, you know, I may not be able to get back to you, especially if you email me or text me three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, I may not be able to get back to you till that Monday um, because work is work and home is home. Um, and for some people, they like to answer messages that time of night, but don't expect that from everybody. Some people are very strict with business time is business time and home time is home time, especially given the circumstances um, and everybody having to kind of shift their lives a little bit to accommodate work. Be professional. It's really important that you're professional. Um, think about that with every communication that you send. So use formal readings, dear professor, so-and-so, you know, and think of your writing as if somebody was checking it or marking it. Um, don't use slang language, you know, don't use abbreviations that they aren't, you know, that aren't common. Um, try to make sure that all your communication is, is formal. Of course, no memes, emojis, if the professor on text message uses them with you, then feel free to use them back. 
Um, however, if not, <laughs> then don't do it. Don't be the first one to do it. Um, add your name to the subject line of the email. This um, is a, a helpful to me so that I know going into the email who the email is from and I can keep track of it. I can put all the emails together of that person's name um, you know, and it just makes it easier to organize it. So uh, I would, and, and the professor doesn't just get emails from students, they get emails from the college, they get emails from all over the place. So if you put your name in the subject line, that way they'll know that it's you trying to contact them um, and maybe uh, get back to you a little bit better or at least help them with organizing um, how they're, you know, doing their emails. Um, again, write as if you're turning in an assignment. Um, make sure you, your request or question um, is clear and concise. So don't go on and on and on, paragraphs and paragraphs, and then at the very end, you ask the question. Be clear and concise. Professors um, are, again, because everybody's home, everybody's communicating online, written form. So, you know, they don't need a whole lot of story unless the story is pertinent to what you're asking the professor. Um, but I would suggest that you're very clear and concise about what it is you're requesting so that they can give you a clear and concise answer. I would also recommend that you limit the number of questions that you're asking um, in a particular email. Because if you're asking multiple questions that um, may kind of confuse the email a little bit, that may be more appropriate for like a phone call and you can ask to set up an appointment to talk to the professor um, or something like that. And also, again, you know, write as if you're turning in an assignment. So grammatical errors, make sure that your email is free of grammatical errors. Requesting a meeting. So if you do decide that an email is just too much um, and your text message and you really do need to meet with your professor, I advise you to ensure that you're prepared for the meeting. So write down any questions that you have for the professor ahead of time um, and have any materials in front of you, if it's a textbook or any notes from class or whatever it is, make sure that you have those things in front of you and ready um, to go when the professor um, is talking to you. Noise-free environment as much as possible. Um, again, we know that there are children at home, there are other people at home, and it can be difficult to find a noise free environment. However, you want that so that you're not distracted. Um, they're not distracted and you're not distracted when you're having that call. Ready to take notes, make sure that you have a notepad and you are ready to go. Um, have your pen, have your pencil, you know, have your paper and pad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the other thing is be mindful of time. Again, this is a new thing. We're trying to get used to the rhythm of it. Be mindful of the time um, and not keeping the professor on the line too long because there may be other, other students that they may want to, um, to help. And there was something else that came up in my brain, but I can't re remember it right this second. Um, oh, background. Um, in your background, so um, I chose this room because there's nothing in my background, um, but be mindful of your background. You may have children <laughs> or other things going on in your background, um, you know, that you may not want the professor to see. So uh, there are actually virtual um, uh, uh, backgrounds that you can put on, and that's in Zoom. Um, and let me see if I can really quickly show that to you. I'm not sure. You know what? I'll leave that for another, another one. Um, so here's my information. See, I have to go because my child um, is interrupting my video. Mommy, I'm just showing you where it is. Okay, that's to write on the. That's to write on. The, okay. Um, but my name is Dr. Aubrey Nance. This is my email address, anance at ccp.edu. This is my Google number, 267-536-9374. You can call that number uh, on Best Buy text. That way I just, I get it a little bit faster and I can answer you on the phone or um, on the computer. If you have any questions, if you need any counseling um, for academic issues, personal issues, you have things going on, you wanna talk through some issues, um, feel free to give me a call. Um, and we can set up an appointment to do that.
And that's the other thing. Try to set up an appointment. If you do get the, the faculty member on the phone, um, see if you can set up an appointment because it's not fair to the faculty member or to you if they're in the middle of something and they're just trying to kind of, kind of give you an aside conversation. So try to set up an appointment. Um, and that way you can get that professor's full time. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good day and stay healthy.